Hello and welcome back to our HIP Roman Restoration campaign. In our last episode we lost our war against the Aztecs, which is not too unexpected I guess. I think it would have been a pretty tough order to actually win that one. But we did accomplish something out of it, which was to kill a large portion of his event spawn troops. We got about 60,000 of his 160,000 killed, which should make him a little more feasible to deal with in the next war we have against him which I assume he'll probably declare on us whenever his truce is up, which I think is 10 years? Let's actually find out. Oh, he only gets five years, okay. Well, still. I think we'll be better equipped to deal with him at that point. All right, we'll disband this army and we'll re-raise our troops down here. Really, 71? I guess we did just lose a lot in that battle. Let's see, do we have a large army in Italy here, or at least a decently sized one. We'll continue our conquest of this city in here, and let's also check out what the problem is with the tier one here. Turma of Sivas. Where is that? Over here. Okay. How did this happen? So he is ultimately under the Barakids, of course. Okay. I imagine that was some kind of inheritance issue. But uh, that's pretty unfortunate. I guess we're just going to have to declare war on the Barakids to fix that. For now, we'll get this war finished with and get the Peasant Revolt put down as well. Alright, so you're on your way here. You also have another army down here. The Fall of the Great Plains. The Aztec have come to terms with their fear of horses and several breeders have been established in the Valley of Anoak. In their homeland, there is precious little information from overseas, but from what can be pieced together, it seems the Aztecs have used their new cavalry regiments to great effect in finally pacifying their stubborn rivals on the northern plains. The Shonshon, Shoshone Dominions and the Sioux Commonwealth have already been incorporated in their growing empire, and the Aztec armies are now marching towards the last holdouts of the free Iroquois city-states on the Atlantic coast. It may only be a matter of time before the entire continent is ruled from the great imperial city. The same must never happen here. Well, we'll definitely be trying our best to stop them. Your ward was caught playing around with the court musician's instruments, making loud noises and disturbing the peace. Eh, uh, yeah, we can let him rock and roll all over the place. Definitely should appoint a new Grand Domestic at this point. It'll be you. We can train troops in the capital here. And we also lost our Mysticos. which can be this guy. We'll have him study technology. Get you over here to speed this up a little bit. Since it's on a uh, on a city holding here, we should be able to siege this relatively quickly. We got more delicious baklava for extra diplomacy and health, which sounds good. Um, our nephew claims that he would be a better chancellor. Well, our current guy is actually not landed, so I think we will do that. I think we've gotten kind of lucky that we haven't had any faction problems here after we lost so many troops in that war. And things are replenishing slowly here.
And just as I say that, we have a new independence faction. But let's see who our most powerful vassals are so that we can make sure that they are happy. I guess all of our kings are generally happy, so that's certainly helping us stay stable here. I think this guy is probably someone we want to work on. Uh, where is your capital? You must have land elsewhere. Is it here? Yes, okay. Weird that it's not highlighted. Uh, yeah, that guy looks like a heretic to me. Yep, prisoners can be released. That seems fine. Let's ransom some of these as well. For some easy money. Okay. Our siege is finished and the war is over, so we have this holding properly under our control. We'll just bring this army down to deal with the revolt here. The Mongols, okay, the many Khans of the steppe have been rallied under the same banner. The leader that managed to unite them all is Daratai of the Mongol Empire. The people of the steppe now call their leader Genghis Khan, greatest of Khans, and have set their minds not only on ruling the steppes, but to spread throughout the world. Is there anyone who can stop the thundering armies of thousands of Hoos? Hmm. Maybe this means they, the Mongols are going to start being more aggressive. Which they haven't really been doing just yet. Our Ecclesiarch has succeeded in his mission though, so that's good. And let's see, I think we have all of our land up here converted. Still have some counties down in Egypt that need to be worked on though. Um, attacking to planes, that should be fine. And hopefully we just get enough war score from this battle to end it. If not, we'll head up to wherever that smaller army is. Oh, I guess they're gone. One of our vassals probably took care of it. But that's 100% anyway, so we can enforce demands there. Expand these boats too. Oh, we have another army raised down here, which we definitely do not need. And another one up here, okay. Alright, so unfortunately we don't get to see what is part of the next tier, even though we've completed tier three because we've lost this one holding. Let's check how strong the Barakids are. 64,000, so we could take them on right now. But I think it might be a little wiser to stay at peace until our levies are replenished a little bit more. And we'll just take the ambition to convert a province again. During a visit to Fanarion, this duke and his entourage were accosted by brigands. Well, I think we'll have to side with the more powerful vassal here and improve his opinion. Alexandra asks, Daddy, where do children come from? Which, uh, I don't know, surely she's a little bit too young to be asking 
such kinds of questions. I will tell her when she gets older, she'll probably become diligent or cynical, which would be okay. She's diligent. Okay, things are replenishing pretty nicely. We're back up over 100k. Maybe we don't need to stay at peace for too much longer. I think we'll probably just hold a feast and then as soon as that's over we'll declare on the Barakids. Uh, we'll go with Tolerance here, I suppose. So I, unfortunately I doubt we did enough damage to the Aztecs for them to start getting any serious revolts or anything. Uh, she can rot. I think we'll send out our marshal to hunt for boar meat. Okay, our sister has been sent into hiding again. Alright, we are losing money right now, I'm assuming, to retinue reinforcement. But I think we'll be okay. Um, we are gluttonous, which is... Something that we'd like to lose. I think we might have a chance to lose it if we spend just enough to satisfy everyone's hunger. But apparently we didn't. Our vassal refuses our invitation. Okay. Oh, he's in hiding. Aragon is having a revolt down there. It's unfortunate for them. Over Crown Authority. The guests have arrived. Welcome to the feast. And is complaining about the food. We'll decline to give him a fief. Uh, we need a new Ecclesiarch again. Have another pretty good one, so that's fine. My son is mastering the art of diplomacy. Hardly anyone refuse more wine or complain about the food, so that seems like a pretty successful feast. And meanwhile, our vassal levies certainly have replenished to almost full. So I think we're probably going to be just fine to declare war right now. He's involved in a war against somebody over here. We have a county over here? Okay. Under Egypt, I see. Uh, and here. Not sure when we got this. Um, anyway. I guess we'll just hold on to it. But, um... So yeah, he has 60,000. He is involved in a war uh, somewhere over in this area, I'm assuming. So I think we should be able to beat him pretty easily. Take this holding back. Uh, we'll just raise a few troops from the nearby vassals to get in here and siege that. 
My son is a charitable little rascal. He just gave his newest toy to the Smith's son. Uh, he can be charitable, that's fine. I'm not sure I really want to actually send troops over to their land, but I guess we are probably going to have to. Uh, let's raise armies from Jerusalem, Syria, and Antioch, which I believe we can get here. 17,000. Let's transport Egypt's army over here by boat. And we'll get, uh, I don't know, about this many more. And we'll just start sieging the closest point to our borders, I think. My son is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. Okay, 35,000 is probably going to be too many to march through these desert counties all in one go, so we'll at least split them in half. In fact, the supply limit down here is about 12k in most of these counties. So we're going to need to split these further. Population of wolves in Thrace has grown to such size that their attacks on livestock, run once ra rare, have increased in number and are damaging the local economy. Well, that is unfortunate. But we aren't building anything there right now anyway. After a lively evening at court where everyone drank, laughed and feasted, me and Alexandra were left alone by the late hours after everyone retired to their quarters. This is our wife, of course. We happily chatted for some time about the most diverse topics as the servants prayed that we dismiss them finally as fatigue was starting to show. I suggested we take the conversation to the bedroom. No better way to conclude a day. So 50% chance she becomes pregnant. And if she does, I guess there's another 50% chance that we'll finally have a son born in the purple. Not that I would be sad about uh, Miletios here being our heir, but if we could get somebody a bit younger who maybe was a strong genius. That would be even better. Uh, we'll have you go there, we'll have you go over here, I suppose. Okay, that seems fine. I'll probably get rid of these boats if I can select them. Meanwhile, we're about halfway done with our siege on the holding that we actually want. We could get lucky and we might just surrender after we siege this down. A party of soldiers fly flying the banner of this Duke of Genoa recently set up camp in the middle of a field belonging to a farmer in Constantinople. Um, and they burned down his crop. So I don't think we can afford to pay the farmer ourselves since we're still losing money to our retinue. We don't want to raise revolt risk, so unfortunately we're going to have to annoy our Duke. He's not too upset about it though. Uh, you are no longer content to rest on your laurels, the problems facing your realm or legion, and clearly no one can fix them but you, so we become ambitious. Which is great. Uh, 
Uh, we lost a battle over here. Okay. I wasn't aware that I even had any troops in that area. And that's our other three armies, so I guess we don't have any other troops raised. And my wife is pregnant, so we'll be hoping for a son. Oops, and we ran into the enemy army over there. Fortunately, with relatively equal numbers and no terrain penalty. Unfortunately, we won't have any leaders in this army. We do have reinforcements already on their way in. So we can get some leaders in that way and hopefully win this battle. Why don't you stay where you are for now? So this is going to arrive in just a few more days here. Alright. So we can see about 10,000 more of his troops here. Which still leaves quite a few unaccounted for. Which I'm maybe a little bit worried about. Wondering if we should maybe transport some extra troops over to this area just to be safe. Okay, that gets us to 27%, and I think we wiped out the army. Uh, you actually are going to have to move because of the supply limit here. Those armies are going to be okay, though. Our nephew is an amateurish plotter, and my brother will not be getting a fief of his own. Okay, I think we'll transport over some more troops from some of our kings up in this area. We can land them all over here. So if we do get into another fight, we should be able to have enough troops on hand to win it. Hopefully we can just peacefully siege down some holdings here and get to 100% that way. Or even better, maybe he'll just surrender at some point. A merchant you are acquainted with offers you his abacus. He is growing old now and is becoming less involved in the world of commerce and thinks his abacus will better serve you in your work. Yes, we'll take it. Intrigue, stewardship, and learning. Definitely nice to have. Okay, well, we're out of time for this episode, so we'll leave it here for now. Thanks for watching, and join me again next time.